Pastor Marty. I'm here for the purpose of introducing a good friend of mine, Merritt Hunt, who's going to be the speaker today. Uh, Mary, I met Merritt about 40 years ago under some very unusual circumstances. He was, uh, uh, he had just given his heart to the Lord and he had led about 45 or 50 of his friends to the Lord and he was having a Bible study in his mom's apartment and as, uh, as I met him there he was teaching his friends how to grow deeper in the Lord and somehow he has never really lost his zeal for that. Uh, about 12 years ago, he started getting involved in missions. And over the last little while, he's been doing a lot of preaching to the Mus in the Muslim countries. And he has been now uh, uh, spending some time in the Philippines, in Kenya, in Sudan, in Tanzania, Uganda, in Pakistan, uh, in uh, Tunisia and also in uh, England and Ireland. He's, uh, they've been doing some uh, crusades, some church planting, and uh, Mary is now on his way in November back to India for another crusade, re mainly to the Muslims. So it's just a joy for me to introduce him to you today. But I'm just wondering, where did he go? <laughs> it was the glare from the door, I didn't even see you. We welcome you in the name of the Lord, brother. Thank you. God bless you. Sick of I feel at home already. Amen. I love this church. Best bar in town right here. We want freedom and liberty. Come right up to the bar and get a good drink, you know. So we're gonna run a little film right here. Now I apologize before we run. We had eight minutes of footage, the guy did it for my head. I do four minutes and the long he speaks. So I apologize before I get now. We've had more seasons of people, but you just have to work with what you got. So you don't have a lot, you gotta work with a little bit. So just we're gonna roll that right. Yeah. 
You know, I, I have to confess, this is the first time I, first of all, I want to, my thanks to Pastor Bob and for having me up here. He doesn't even know me, really, so it takes a lot of faith to have somebody up that you don't know, but I'll be a good boy, okay? And I know one thing about Pastor Bob already. I saw his wife, so I know he's a heck of a salesman. <laughs> no, I was, uh... Thing happened to me on the way. We got on the airplane, Delta airplane, and uh, I was coming down there. And I'm a man with a mission. I'm a man with a purpose. And uh, you know, Starship Enterprise, Bowling Goal, you know, a five year mission to go to other, explore other worlds, to Bowling Goal where nobody else would go. That's, that should be the Christian's mission, right? Here. The Bowling right. Goal where other people don't want to go. Because there are people there that need to get safe. On the way down there, I told this lady, I said, listen, ma'am, if there's any turbulence in the air, don't worry. Just call me because I'm a man of mission and we'll take care of it. And I didn't think nothing of it. I went into a deep sleep, you know, and all of a sudden the lady's going like this. Hit me in the ribs like this. And I go, what's up? What's up? Just do something. That's my first point. Do something. What's, what's wrong? The plane is shaking all the place. She said, what do you want me to do? She said, do something religious. <laughs> so I was, I was sitting down in the chair, and I thought for a minute, and I said, oh. So I got up, and I took an offering. So, you know. <laughs> but that's, that's my first that's my first point here today. Now, Annalise is going to, how do you do that? You're going to do the yeah. here? Now, Annalise has been so kind here. All this technology stuff, I'm one step away from smoke signal, so. <laughs> so uh, now, could you give me this, do this when I got that 25 minutes? I think they got five minutes. I'll be looking at you, okay? All right. And I'll, uh, I, I forgot my glasses and I can't see the clock. You got it. What's this? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, you better excuse me, you know, this is a. Uh, okay, so, uh, anyways, uh, our, our text is. Turn to your Bible to uh, John chapter 10, verse, John chapter 20, verse 31. We read these words. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and believing that you might have life in His name. I have uh, seven points. It's a, it's a three-day seminar. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to give you these seven principles of effective evangelism. And we'll hit, we'll, we'll go for 25 minutes, I'll get the high five, and then I'll, I'll kind of start slowing down. Kind of get up to stop here. But our first one is that what I did is I took the seven miracles in the Gospel of John. We, you know, there are more principles than seven for effective evangelism, but there were seven miracles, so I attached seven principles. We can go on all day, and uh, I I believe in this stuff right here. Uh, I don't I don't want you to get the impression that I go to India to get people saved. I do, and that's just a relatively new thing. But wherever you go, wherever you go, people are. And one thing I found out about Pennsylvania and around here, there are a lot of Catholics. How many people here are Catholics? Please raise your hand. Oh, I love you guys. How many people were Catholics? How many? There's a lot of Catholics. I love Catholics. I was a Catholic. And I, I, I just, I love Catholics. I wanted to be a priest. I was like the Catholic of all Catholics. I go to Lent and sacrifice. I wanted to be a priest until I turned 14. And then I realized I wouldn't be a very good priest, I guess. But I mean, Catholics are great people. They believe that Jesus, they believe in the Virgin Mary. They believe in Jesus. They believe he was the Son of God. They've held the principles of the gospel. But in this here, we hear these things are written that you might believe. We want to talk about that word believe. Say, do you really believe? Do you really believe the gospel? Because if you really believe the gospel, this place will never be the same. I'm telling you right now, Pastor Bob, I think I'm prophesying right now. The walls here are too small. Here, here, out there. I feel a little uncomfortable today because I normally don't do much of my preaching in a church. 
but, but just be aware of it. We'll, we'll get through this, okay? So the first miracle, very first miracle Jesus did is turn with me to, uh, I guess it'll be up there, uh, the principle of obedience we talked about. Now this is an amazing story. We could take a half an hour on this story. We're going to hit it real quick. But I love this scripture. God gave me a way, based on this scripture right here, to uh, talk to a lot of Catholics. Because Catholics just have to be able to express what they already believe. It, you know, They believe that Jesus is the Son of God. They believe He rose from the dead. And Mary, you know, Mary has got a bad rap, but that woman was a woman of faith. That woman was a woman of faith. You, you picture, you know, some of you ladies, you know, an angel appears to you and says, hey, you're going to have faith. Yeah, right, right. And you're going to name him the Son of God. That woman had so much faith. This is what she said. Be it to me according to your word. Oh, that we would say that today. Be it to me, Lord, if I see it in the book, I might not understand it, but I want that. If you said it, I want it. Is that good advice? Now, here's he got these two servants. They're out of wine. And, and his mother says to him, to the servants, verse 5, whatever he says to you, do it. It's the principle of obedience. Whatever he says to you, do it. It's very interesting. The very next chapter, Jesus tells us what to do. Isn't that interesting? Chapter 2, he tells you what to do. To be involved in evangelism, to be a soul winner, First of all, you've got to get in the boat. Would you agree with me? You can't help anybody unless you've been helped. You can't help anybody unless you have a testimony. You know, let people argue with the scriptures all they want. But what they can't take away from me, and what they can't take away from you, is what you've experienced. And if what you've experienced lines up with the Word of God, that's a powerful combination. There's a principle right there. It's somewhere down in the notes. But I'm going to hit on it right now. The principle, the question is, how do you begin a conversation with somebody? Talk about your mistakes. Talk about your failures. Be a real human being. We've all made mistakes. We've all failed. I mean, I walk funny because of mistakes I've made. So I'm going to use everything, everything I can to get the gospel out. I'll humble myself. I got, you see that scar right there? I didn't get that from picking my nose. <laughs> that scar is a testimony. To test it where, where the devil tried to take me out. I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you when you know that you've been forgiven. I tell this to people all the time. You know when you're forgiven is when you can share your heart with somebody else. Some of the junk you've gone through. I'll tell you where I was on April 10th, 1972. You say, I don't even know you. I'm going to tell you one of the biggest sins in my life. Because it's a testimony. It encourages people. And when you share your weakness with people, people will share their weakness with you. And you get on the same playing field. You need to get on the same playing field with people. This is not my notes. That's okay. That's why I don't like two notes, because I never stick to them anyway. <laughs> but the notes are there. It's good stuff. But I'm telling you, April 10th, 1972, under the influence of LSD, I know that's before you talk. I'm dating myself. They just do S S I don't know what they do. April 10th was the day I was supposed to die. The devil set, the devil set me up. I was set up. I went down to Burlington, Vermont to, cut, to buy a pound of marijuana. I took, when I took that second hit of orange sunshine, I was up gone. I felt myself melting, and I did the craziest thing. And even, I got a fellow, got a guy, he's with me right here. <laughs> That second one, you know, I heard about these people jumping off bridges. I was at a point in my life where I could have done anything. I did some pretty crazy stuff. I tell people all the time, there's two kinds of sinners. The bad sinners and good sinners. What's the difference between a bad sinner and a good sinner? A bad sinner makes a six o'clock move. That's not a good thing. So what I ended up doing April 10th, uh, I ended up taking all my clothes off. This was back before Ludus. This was back before Shriek. When I did it with Ludus and Lucidius, it was five years in prison. When I got out there, it's amazing. You still have a conscience under all that stuff. I knew what I was doing was wrong, 
But at this point, the world was coming to an end. I had a mission. I was supposed to see this girl by the name of Mary. It was kind of a religious thing. And I was Jesus Christ, and it was crazy. And I saw Mary. I tried to break into her house. She wouldn't let me in, thank God. And I put my hand on her. And that's how I got there. So when people tell me, you know, I've done too many, you might be in this audience right now, and you figure, you know, I've done too many things bad to ever get to heaven. Oh my word, you can be better than Can you beat that one? I know a guy by the name of the Apostle Paul. He used to go around killing Christians. He called himself the chief of all sinners. And this guy ends up writing a third of the New Testament. Explain that one to me. What is the most amazing thing is, there are people in this auditorium. Now oh, this is true. This is a building. It's a house. It's whatever it is. It's true. There are people in here right now that as I speak to you today, the word of God goes out. Picture this as your heart. The real you is not what I'm looking at right now. The real you is on the inside. If you don't believe it, you go to a funeral sometime. You know, you know the lights are out and that person is gone. That's just a shell. What this is right here is just a shell. It's an earthly tent, right? Some of these earthly tents are kept better than others. This guy here looks pretty good. <laughs> but some of these earthly shells are getting a little bit old. That proves the Bible is true. We're all, look at me, you don't, I don't look a day over 80, do I? <laughs> By the way, I wore my wig today. <laughs> really, I have bushy hair, but I just put on this new wig here. <laughs> you know, God makes a few good looking heads, the rest of you have to cover with hair. <laughs> but the thing is, the real you is on the inside. The real you is on the inside. And as you hear the word of God today, the most amazing thing happens, the miracle of all miracles ever, is your spirit begins to open up. You get to a point that you receive. Try to shake hands with somebody like this one. Can I use you as an example? Okay. Shake hands with your fist like this. Let's shake, this has some fellowship here. Well, we're not getting anywhere like that. But when, when you hear the word of God, all of a sudden our spirit begins to open up. And the Holy Spirit, this is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always ready to move. He's already to connect people. The Holy Spirit comes, joins with your spirit, and you connect with God. And God the Father wants to do this today. Here's what He wants to do today. Amen. Oh. <laughs> God the Father, for God so loved the world. Oh, if we get a revelation, it's for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. If they get a hold of your hand, they'll get a hold of eternal life. It's the magic movie. We teach the kids this. We had a, we had a, uh, we had a, you know, for years at our church, we'd have a fall fun party. Keep the kids off the street. But why not turn a fall fun party into an evangelistic meeting? Two years ago, we had this little business. Called, are you going to have two questions tested you the And they put us right up front. And we decorated with orange lights and stuff like that. It was so exciting. So as they came in, they saw the booth. We trained the kids how to get somebody saved. You know, we make the gospel too hard. But what I learned about going to Pakistan and India, keep it as simple as possible. Because the Bible says, unless you become like a child, Where's my notes? Where am I? What point? Unless you become a child, you'll never enter the kingdom of God. Right here. This kid will almost believe anything. Can I give you, can I give you a dollar today? <laughs> I have a gift here for, for the first kid who wants it. I have a dollar bill. Any kid want a dollar bill? No strings attached. <laughs> Educated adults, you would say, you would say, I should have thought you probably would think it's enough. You just have to hold out for a 10, you know. <laughs> we, we do anything we can to get the gospel to people, make a connection with people. I'll be walking down the street now, and I'll say, hey, we're at, we do a lot of stuff at fairs and stuff like that. I say, hey, I got a dollar for you. If you answer a question, I got a dollar for you if you can tell me what kills more people on the highway than anything else. I got this free, just dollar, just to get their attention, just to get them to stop, because people are so busy. 
If you can get eye contact with somebody, do something different. You're going to a, you're going to a, a grocery store. A typical person goes to the grocery store and goes like this. You know, they're into their shopping. They'll get their hands out there, no eye contact. Going through the motion like this. Try something different when you go into the, into the uh, thing. Just walk in and look around. Observe. Smile at me. Hi, how are you? Now I know, they'll think you're a little weird, but you are. <laughs> you're a peculiar person. Do something really out of the difference. Hi, my name is Mary. If they can get a hold of your hand, they can get eternal life. Start making connections with people. I hope in your cell phone you've got 50 or 60 people that don't know Jesus. How do you talk to somebody that, that uh, you haven't shared the gospel with in a long time? I've got clients like that. 20 years I haven't shared the gospel with them. I came to the conclusion I've got to be honest with them. And I just, I would call them up and say, you know, I want to apologize to you. How long have I known you now? The longer you don't share with somebody, the harder it is. <coughs> just, why don't you just be real? I'd like to, I'd like to, I want to apologize to you. What do you want to apologize? Well, I've known something for 40 years that's changed my life. I found out how to get to heaven. I don't think I've ever shared that with you. Can I ask you a question? Notice Jesus when he taught. He was always asking questions. He was always asking questions. One of the questions I love to ask people is, it's a question that's on everybody's mind in this room. I know it. I know it. Especially, you've all, everybody in this room has gone to a funeral. Everybody in this room has gone to a funeral. You know somebody is gone. One thing, my wife told me this. Pastor Bob, I believe everything my wife said. You know, I just, I follow, I'm learning to follow instructions. You know, just by the way, I just want to let you know this. Women are smarter than men. You know that, Pastor? Women are smarter than men. The only problem is God never told us that. But after about 25 years of marriage, we finally kind of get in there. But my wife told me, line up ten people, and the statistics are out, all ten will die. All ten will die. So we, we, have this, we have this idea in our mind. Why not use what everybody knows anyway? So I asked the question. You know, you know, if you were to die tonight, do you know for sure if you'd go to heaven? Now that's a yes or a no answer. If they say yes, I get excited. If they say no, I get excited. Because if they say no, my next question is, would you like to know how? And if they say, no, I really don't want to know. Well, my job is done. I can't, you know, I can't convince a heart that's not open yet. Next, next. But that person who said no, there's something that's in, I know human nature. Inside that person is curiosity. And I've kind of seen it. So. He said, you can show me how to get to heaven. You've done your job. Jesus didn't say, go get everybody saved. He just said, go be a witness. Go be a witness. And we can all do that. Now, this is something you don't have to go to India. Uh, I was at a, uh, I was, I just, I'm down here for a business, business convention. And uh, I, uh, we saw that business convention at the Sheridan over in Philadelphia, downtown Philadelphia. We had 13 people to see Christ. Now, we didn't have a church service, uh, but somehow the Holy Spirit knew there were people there that needed to get saved. And guess what? They came up to Jesus Christ. One-on-one -on -one soul winning is the most effective way. I'm, I'm telling you this right now. I, at any church I've been speaking, I would say this, because I'm telling you the truth. This church in itself, the church I go to, any church will not fulfill the Great Commission. Because if we're expecting people to come here, you know, if we expect people to get out of their house on a Sunday morning after what they did Friday and Saturday night, you know, we're kind of dreaming. Now, some will. But you know what? I think more Christians, more non-Christians, have more faith than most Christians. Let me tell you what I mean. They'll come to our house, but we won't go to their house. Huh? Come on now. Do I hear an amen? Amen. Yeah. It's true, isn't it? I mean, what was the last time that you went to a, a non-Christian's house with a purpose, with a mission to get them saved? Now, I don't want to give you all 
to condemn right now because it's simple to give somebody's faith. First of all, what is the gospel? That was one of my points. <laughs> but it says, the Bible tells us the second point is, uh, let's get that. How am I doing? Right? Good. Good. The second point is, first of all, these, these servants, they believe. They believe they did what they did and the miracle happened. But our next miracle is in uh, John chapter 4. Here's a man that, uh, verse 50, it says right here, Jesus said to this man, go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word. The principle is, believe the gospel. Now the question is, of course I believe the gospel. But I'm saying, do you really believe the gospel? From 1 to 10, how much do you believe the gospel? My heart has been challenged there. From 1 to 10, how much do I believe the gospel? Because here's what, here's what it says in the book of uh, Mark, chapter 16. It tells us to go into all the world. Well, if we believe the gospel, are we, are we doing that? Now, we don't have to go into all the world. We can go next door. But if we believe this message, what is the message? The message is very simple. It's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4. That Jesus Christ was crucified according to Scripture. And on the third day he rose from the dead. Sometimes I have thought that this is so simple that I have to add stuff to it. I would go to preach a sermon and I'd try to find some new revelation. I'll give you a revelation. Is that the Son of God came down here. I'll give you the mystery of godliness. That God was manifested in the flesh. He was preached to the world. He was believed on in the world. He was justified in the Spirit. And he, and, he, and he ascended back into heaven. That's the mystery of godliness. Part of the mystery of godliness is your part. Because he was preached on in the world. And then he was believed on. People believe this message. People are believing this message all over the world. The devil will lie to you and tell you that you're not able, you're not capable. My wife was here, she, she laid, she laid, she's a quiet lady, but she finally broke the lies of the devil. Here was the lie, she'd tell you this, she said, number one, the devil told me for years that I wasn't able, that I wasn't capable, and, and, and that nobody would listen to me. And we started having these meetings at our house where we were training people to be disciples. You know when you're a disciple, you're following Jesus. You know you're a disciple, right? Someone say amen. Come on, you guys got to talk to me a little bit. Amen. amen. Come on, buddy. Amen. All right. Just encourage me a little bit. I mean, I need a little encouragement. You know? How do you know if you're a disciple? You're following Jesus, right? And if we follow Jesus, what did he say? Yeah, you know, get set up. No, follow me. Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He didn't say, follow me and I'll keep you keepers of the aquarium. <laughs> he said, follow me and follow me and I'll take you and I'll make you, form you into a fisherman. It's the work of God. The first time I went witnessing, I was scared. The hundredth time I went witnessing, I was scared. It has nothing to do. But you know what I'm finding out as a I know a way to get rid of fear. The best way to get out of fear is to say, oh, you have faith, brother. I'll give you some better than faith. The Bible says that love, that faith works by love. Perfect fear cast out all love. You know, don't look at someone's faith and keep you keep, right? So don't look at somebody's faith. Don't look at the outward. Look at the heart. Look at the hurt of the heart. Look at the hurt of the heart. Because it's right here. Man looks on the outside, God looks at the heart. The rougher they are, I can remember a time when he uh, asked me to go and speak to a, a group of motorcycle people. And I'm telling you, they look pretty mean. I met Brother, brother Frank back here, the motorcycle guy. <laughs> uh, you know, I believe, you know, the first person that got involved in body pierced Jesus Christ. He was pierced for us. So, don't be afraid to relate to people because they look different. When I went to Africa for the first time, 
I was looking at, I, I, I was kind of scared. But then I started looking at people's cars. So I, I was, God asked me to speak to this group. It was in Burlington. And they were on the other side. I was on once and I was hitchhiking home. I wasn't getting a ride and they weren't leaving. And I didn't really want to go. And I had this talk with God. I said, God, if you want me to speak to them, if you don't want me to speak to them, have to go away. Well, they never went away. God, if you don't want me to speak to them, have to get a ride. I was there for about a half hour. I wasn't getting a ride and they weren't going away. Finally, I said, well, I'm going to go over there. What am I going to say? You know, how am I going to answer this? So I walked across there and I, I had a little book. I had something to give them. And they started laughing at me and stuff like that. But I was there for one person. One person, hey man, leave, leave the man alone. Give him what he has to say. I didn't have much to say. I gave a piece of information. My mission is done. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do it. Do it. The servant, the servant. Can you imagine how stupid he must have felt? Okay, now you take this water, you give it to the chief steward. Can you imagine? When did the miracle happen? When the water was poured? Or when the water was being poured into the glass? I have a feeling that it actually became a miracle when action took place. Belief is faith in action. It's just taking that first step. You know, I was in, a, I was in Philadelphia and I told this gal, I was in a car and it's one of those things with sun sunroof opens up like that. And sometimes you gotta do something kind of crazy to get people's attention. So I stood up and st stuck my head out of the door and I said, hey, I've got an important message to share with you when I when I come back. What was it? It was the principle of expectation. She was expecting something. Curiosity. So uh, when I came back from what we did, I didn't want to talk to her. I was tired, you know, but I had told her I was going to go, so I had to go over and talk to her, and, and I got strengthened. She was from Haiti, just ready for somebody to talk to her about Jesus, and she got saved. What did I tell her? What did I tell her? You really only know, I, I learned this when I was a Christian back in my hospital bed. I started my Christian walk, I never did, I never started a Christian walk. I was five months on the hospital bed, so I didn't learn how to do a Christian walk until five months after I got off the hospital bed. But I heard something called the Roman Road. You have a pen, you should write this down. You can use it. It's not a written. Most things I say are not a written. It's a verbal. The first thing you start out with first is me. Romans 3.23. Have you heard that before? For all of sin that falls short of the glory of God. We've all known if you're, if you're a bad sinner like me, it sounds like you were. Right? Okay. You were, okay. And you can, you got it down. This guy, well, oh, thank you. I mean, you know, you're ready to go. Yeah, yeah I can use the second one too. You, you done this? Yes, I just learned it. Very good, very good. God, I'm not doing anything different. Romans, I'm just, I'm in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be a uh, so, Romans 5, yeah, 5 8. But God demonstrates His love to us. God proves His love to you. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Number three, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. And I like to demonstrate the gift of God. If I got something around, I give it. I give, let me demonstrate that now. That is a beautiful message of the gospel. It's not according to works. If you told somebody they had to climb Mount Everest, crawling back to glass, you would have people in this church lining up all over the place. Because there's something in man that wants to do something, to get something, to earn something. God says, you can't do it. You can't do it. You just got to receive it. I, I had some different people here today. One of the principles that we talked about is get some new information. So I, I try to get everything I can from the evangelist, one of my mentors, 33-year-old guy. It's nice to have a mentor. And be willing to learn from people that are younger than you. Be willing to learn from people that are older than you. This man right here, God gave him, God gave him a mission statement. By the time he was 30 years old, he wanted to lead a million people to Jesus Christ. His name is Daniel King. If you can get Daniel in the church, he's a great guy. He's an evangelist. That's not a most. He's an introvert. So this is called the Master Soul Win. He goes through the he goes through John chapter he goes through John chapter four, talks about the Samaria woman. Who would like this book? And 
And I have another one right here. So many inspiration for leading people to Christ. Who would like that one? I don't know who raised their hand. Enjoy that book. It will inspire you. It will inspire you. Daniel King, I went on my first mission trip. I met Daniel King in uh, Mexico. And uh, we were walking down the street inviting people to uh, to say this. What do you do? He said, I'm an international evangelist. I said, you're a what? Yeah, it's about this tall, you know. I'm an international evangelist. He didn't have white shoes on or nothing, you know. <laughs> I, said, I said, well, how many people do you speak to? Well, I said, the biggest crowd I spoke to is 50,000 people. Now, if you ask Daniel, and I asked him, I said, Daniel, if somebody gave you a million dollars today, what would you do? Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, you need to I could do 10 crusades. It takes money to do these crusades. Uh, this little, we're going to, uh, by the way, thank you so much. I, I'm so privileged for you. I guess I got on the prayer thing. I know when you get on the prayer list, things happen. So I'm, I am confident. I've never done a crusade all by myself. I'm very confident that you guys are praying for me. And that's the greatest thing you can do to fulfill the great commission. It's the three P's. Number one, pray. Everyone can go on a mission trip and they can pay. They can use their wallet. You can sit on them all the time. That little trip that we're doing is going to cost us $30,000. And uh, Daniel told me if you want to preach the talk, talk, be willing to raise money for the rest of your life. It takes money to preach the talk. The third thing you can do, and I would advise every person here that believes in the Great Commission, by the way, it's not the Great Suggestion, it's the Commission. One of my points here. Co-mission. You're going up. You're linking up with Jesus Christ. Don't think you're going there alone. There's a day of expect God to show up. Expect God to be with you. Because if God doesn't show up, nothing's going to happen. Uh, makes me think of a time I was in Africa. And uh, I'm just going to tell you a few stories here. How many? Five? Five minutes? I'll, I'll close with a couple more stories here. I'm sorry, Alice. I apologize wherever you are. I didn't do the notes. That's why I was kind of skeptical about doing the notes. I did. I followed your... I was a beat. Mother Superior. <laughs> but you have the notes. You have the principles. And it's, it's seven, great, seven great miracles. And we tie a principle and evangelism in there. But I want to close with two stories that emphasize a couple of my points. I forgot what points they are, but... But here's one of the things. I was in I was in I was in Uganda. I thought God speak to me about going to the islands. And the islands are pretty nasty. I mean, we went to I stopped telling this joke because I, I told my wife I took you on a cruise when we you took that ride in that boat to uh, that island in Lake Victoria for eight hours. I stopped saying that. She rebuked me quite severely for that joke. So I don't say it anymore once she's here. Uh, but I was on this island and I wanted to find a way to share the gospel. You know, and if you realize Jesus always used things to commute to God, commute to God. He talked about the birds in the air. I think we can learn a lot from Jesus. So uh, these guys were bending heads. So the thought that the Holy Spirit gave me was uh, ask him to come out and bend his I've never been in that before. I sat there, nobody said nothing. All of a sudden, the guy didn't get me. So I sat down there. I never been in that before, so I watched him and he said, Boys, please don't say nothing. Now you feel kind of foolish when you're sitting there bending and you're a white guy with three or four black guys, and you just bend no, no one's saying nothing. But I was said, don't say nothing. All of a sudden somebody said something. He said, I'm a Muslim. He said, my eyes hurt me. He was a man that had a need. I needed the power of God. Jesus said, you shall receive power from the Holy Ghost in the morning, in Acts chapter 1. We could go into a whole good discussion on that. We don't have time today. But, but I had to believe. I had to step out. And says, I said to him, as I heard these words come out of my mouth, if I pray for you and God heals you now, Will you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord? And you say, boy, you're really, well, what have I got to lose? 
right? So uh, he said, yeah, I will. So I prayed a short prayer. The only reason people pray long prayers is because they figured once they get done praying, it either happens or doesn't happen. I prayed a real short prayer. I said, Jesus, heal this man, man's eyes right now in Jesus' name. And all of a sudden, the guy looked alarmed. He went, what's going on? He says, the pain is abating, which means the pain is, you're it? the pain is going away. Well, praise the Lord. Did you say to give your life to Jesus? Pray up to you. Let's see Jesus. You see. Magic move. Grab that hand. Get to hold that hand. You know, it's amazing what you do with a hand. It's a magic move. Everybody will give you their hand. See this? What's it become? Watch this. It's magic, you know. You can do it, right? Yes. Perfect. So, uh, Olga. So he prayed to receive Christ. All you do is you're going to get one. If you get one, if you're in a crowd, if you get one, people are sheep. It's like pop, 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 pop. Before we were done, there were four or five people that received Christ. I love preaching the gospel in the island because there's water all around you. So I just did the next thing that Jesus told us to do. The next thing Jesus tells you to do after you receive him is jumping up, get out of the water, get baptized. No time like the future. Go walk down the water. They thought I'm absolutely crazy. I am kind of keep trying to get out of my mind as much as possible and get into my prayer. I was out here like this. Two followed me out there. And from that point there, before the crusade, we had 12 people saved. One last story is do things out of the ordinary. Uh, whatever it takes to communicate with God. Sometimes I'll tell people, if you take my little test here, I will... I will attempt to uh, jug the water for while it's blindfolded. Of course, I can't jug them without a blindfold. So I just threw them up in the air, they fall all those legs. Well, I attempted, now it's time for you to take this test with me. But I was out there and I was, I was in this, on the marketplace, and I started preaching and getting absolutely nowhere. Finally, Holy Spirit gave me an idea. And it was a guy with a chicken. I called the chicken test. This chicken was about ready to be murdered. This man had bought this chicken for the purpose of killing this Christian and eating this chicken. I asked him how much he paid for the chicken. He said 3,500 shillings. I said, I got a deal for you. If you sell it to me right now, I'll give you 5,000 shillings. <coughs> so what are you going to do with the chicken that you just purchased to share the gospel? So I had the chicken. So I started to share the gospel with the chicken. Use whatever's in your hand. Samson used the jawbone of a, of a donkey and slew a thousand pills. He picked up what was in his hand. Pick up, I call it ninja evangelism. A ninja will pick up anything, you know, like a straw and kill people with it, something like that. I picked up my chicken. So I started talking. And you see this chicken right here? I love this chicken. This man was going to murder this chicken. But I bought this chicken. I had the price for this chicken. And I'm here to tell you today, there's no reason why anybody in this building should go to hell. That's because right. Jesus Christ has the price for your soul. That's the right. Bible says that we were not redeemed with silver and gold. We were not bought back. To be redeemed means to be bought back. Bought back in the family of God. But we were all redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And I shared with them that I had the price for this chicken. Just like Jesus had the price for your soul. And before we were done there, five or six, seven, eight, nine, ten people received Jesus Christ. Jesus can use a chicken. Jesus can use whatever he wants to use, because he made everything. I'm going to turn the I'm going to turn the service back over to Pastor Bob. But we want to ask you right now, if you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ, we encourage you. We command you in the name of Jesus. Receive Jesus. That's why you're here. That's why he brought me here. That's why you're in this church. It's time to receive Jesus. Um, you, know, you, can, you know, what you, you can just sense like wherever Merritt goes, he understands that God's there. That God is there. It's a divine appointment. Whether he's over in India or he's here in Manchester, New Jersey. He has his, the eyes of his heart open to see what God is doing. He just wants to meet him there. And 
The same way he comes up here and is able to share all those different stories, that's supposed to be the life that you're living. That's the life that we're all supposed to be living in. God is not different. The Spirit of God is not different in merit than He is in you. He, he wants to be made known to the entire world. I think of this young man, Mike, here, and his girlfriend that are here tonight. Um, a couple of nights ago, I was sitting here in our prayer service, and we, we had our thing outside. We, we weren't supposed to be here. I was supposed to be home that night, and I was supposed to be with my family, and we were going to have our prayer stuff done at home. Instead, somehow, we called Pastor Brian, said they weren't doing worship practice, so we're like, oh, there's Instead of having 30 people in my living room, we'll come over to the church. We got here, and the worship team was like, no, we are here. My first thought, I was, I was ticked. I'm like, man, I don't, I, we, we got all the way here. We got everybody here. And I'm like, thanks a lot, Val. You didn't, but, but, you know, I said, thanks a lot, Val. I blame her for it. And I, I walk out the door, and I'm like, all right, how are we going to get everybody to my house? And Tyler came out and said, let's turn it into something good, Mr. Bob. Shut up, Tyler. Um, but I was like, yeah, he's right, all right. So we stayed in here and we worshiped together. And we all worshiped together. And we went outside because it was hot in here. And we did the rest of our prayer shift. And Mike drove by. And he saw us all out here. And then when we went to leave that night, Mike was sitting out in the parking lot with his girlfriend. I went and talked to him for a few minutes. I invited him to church. And there he sits right now. Wow. Come here, Daddy. My, my, my children invited their friends over to our house, and we were we were there the other day, and we're planting our garden. Next thing you know, I got 15 of the neighborhood kids planting tomatoes and oranges and what well, oranges, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what we're planting. It's all green to me. I'm sticking it in the ground. But this 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 young little girl, she she, she doesn't have a, a daddy in her life anymore, and she's only 10 years old, and her dad she hasn't seen her dad in, in, in a long long time. And I said to her, it hurts pretty bad, doesn't it? She said, no, I don't really care. And I said, you know, when I was about your age, I remember I was, to, I, my, my mom said my dad was coming to pick us up. And I went out and sat by the mailbox and he never came. I sat out there time and time again thinking maybe this day he's coming. And every time she'd say he's coming today, he never came. Finally one day I said, you know what? He probably ain't coming and I don't care. I, said, I did care. But I thought, I figured if I just said I didn't, then no one, then, then maybe it wouldn't matter. And I said, no, I think you care too, don't you? And she started to, she got that look on her face and she said, yeah, I do care. And, um, and I said, you love your daddy, don't you? And she said, yeah. I said, you know what, I want to tell you something. I didn't know it then, but God was going to do something. He was going to use that hurt inside of my heart so that I would find God. I said, I think he's going to do the same thing inside of you. I said, do you, do you know that God is real? And she said, I, I think so. I said, you feel that breeze on the back of your neck right now? That's, that's the presence of God. I said, you feel a thing inside, stir inside your heart? She said, yeah. I said, that's the presence of God. And God will use those things to show you his love for you. And so here it is. It's like just like Merritt was sharing there. That the situations, the things that when I was a little boy, I would have wanted to trade that. I would have been like, man, what I wouldn't have done for my dad to show up on a, on a you know, Friday at 3 o'clock. But today now, 40 years later, I can thank the Lord. I can thank the Lord for the circumstances and the bad stuff and the garbage and the things that in my hand or the things in my life because God now will use it to help others. And it's the same way. He wants to use that in your life. So please, what, what, what Mary was sharing with you is open up the eyes to your heart. Open the eyes of your heart. There's people around you all over the place that are lost and on their way to hell. And I'm telling you something, you'd want to grab Pastor Bob and bring me to them, they're not going to want to hear from some pastor. Trust me, they will listen to you. So thank you, Mary, for sharing with us today. And I do want to pray if there's anyone here who hasn't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, well, I want to... I want to share with you right now that you just, all you need to do is say, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. And the Bible says that you become a child of God. And then you'll understand what all these people are smiling about. You'll understand the joy that they have because you'll have it inside of your heart too. Let's pray. Father God, I just pray. I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the truth of your word. I thank you that you love us so much that we went to the cross and you died so that we wouldn't have to. We know we're going to experience physical death, Lord, but you desire that we would spend forever in eternity with you and that our spiritual life would go on forever in, in, in heaven with you. And so I pray that if there's anyone here who has never asked you into their heart as their Lord and Savior, I pray that right now they would just simply say, Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner, and I know that you died on the cross so that I can be set free from my sin. 
I ask you to come into my heart and save me. And your word, Lord, is forever true. For a child who cries out to you, oh, you're, you will not turn any away. And so I pray that, that for all of us that are now acknowledge you as our Savior, that we would know that forever we get to live with you. And I just pray you give us a confidence in that. In Jesus' name, amen.